Christian Churches United, and Christian Churches United is sort of a coalition of uh, churches in the Dauphin, Cumberland, and Perry County, and um, we have a couple different programs that we uh, we work with, and uh, Lynn had specifically asked me to come to talk about housing and homelessness, which is primarily under Help Ministries and our Susquehanna Harbor Safe Haven program. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and click that, Lynn. Um, we are located on uh, 19th Street in Harrisburg, and we're in a former Lutheran church uh, on 19th Street, and, uh, and just, just off Derry, just like you folks, uh, just a few blocks down. And so that's where the Help Ministries office is, um, so that's just so you can sort of see where that's located. Um, so Help Ministries has a number of different programs to help people who are in crisis, sort of financially or with their housing. And um, so the first thing that we do there is um, if uh, there's a woman or a family um, that is actually in need of emergency housing, if, if they don't have anywhere to go, um, our office is the place to come in Dauphin County. We don't actually provide the shelter, um, but we work with the three shelters in the area that do provide shelter. Uh, those three shelters are the YWCA in Harrisburg, um, a place called Shalom House, uh, which is also right there in the city, and then um, the Interfaith Shelter, which is run by Catholic Charities. So those are the three shelters that would take women or women with children. And so they come to our office, and it is a first come, first serve. So we always tell people if they're looking for shelter, you want to try to get there first thing in the morning uh, because shelters are full. There are some days when there's no room. Uh, for that day. Um, the good, you know, that sounds really bad. The good news is most people that come to our office for emergency shelter do have a place to stay that night. I mean, they're, they're often what are called couch surfing, um, so that they have a family or a friend that they can stay with. Um, so, I mean, there, there might be a, a very occasional happenings where someone comes to our office, we say there's no room in the shelter, and then they literally don't have anywhere to go. But that's very, very rare. Um, the other thing that we can do for people who are looking for shelter is actually provide transportation out of the area. Um, maybe they have family in Philadelphia that they can stay with. And so we can actually help them get a bus ticket to get to Philadelphia if that's where they have somewhere to stay. Um, so that's another way that we work for, with folks um, that are uh, you know, literally homeless. Um, and then once folks get in shelter, we also do help provide case management um, they obviously have staff at the shelter that are uh, helping people, but we also have them come back to at least some, not everybody, but if there's certain folks that we think need a little extra help, we have them come back by our office and try to help them find that next step, how, the, how they can get into housing. Um, just to mention for men, um, Bethesda Mission obviously is the primary uh, place that serves homeless men in our area. And so they do not have to come to the Help Ministries office. They go straight uh, to Bethesda Mission um, if they're looking for housing. So um, we, we're just, because there's multiple shelters for the women, that's sort of how the Help Ministries office was created to sort of be a clearinghouse so they didn't have to go from shelter to shelter. Um, so the next thing we do at the office, uh, you can go ahead and click through, is obviously we want to help prevent homelessness if we can from beginning. So. Obviously, one of the main reasons that people end up homeless is if they're being evicted for some reason, and or particularly if they're being evicted because they had their hours cut at work or had a medical condition, some reason that, um, for some reason, they got behind on their rent, but they think they can pay it going forward. We do have a program um, that we call just a rental assistance program. It is an application that folks have to fill out, but if they come in and fill out that application, would be eligible. We can help pay up to a certain amount if they've gotten behind on the rent to hopefully avoid them being evicted. And so that's really important because it's always, it's always more expensive to try to help someone after they're homeless. The, the costs of that are, are uh, a lot. So you know, sometimes people might say, well, why are we helping somebody paying rent something that they should pay? Well, again, in terms of our, our public money, it's, it's a lot, lot more helpful if we can prevent them from being evicted. Um, some other ways that we help work at preventing eviction is we run one of PPL's assistance programs, and that's actually called Operation Help. Um, and that's just a one-time assistance. Um, if, if, again, folks, it is an application, so there's certain, some, certain uh, criteria for that. 
um, but we can, again, help people get caught up on their electric bill because one of the main reasons that folks often are evicted, too, is if they have had a utility shut off because um, that, that can, even if they're caught up on other bills, um, if their utilities are shut off, that can give landlord a, a right to evict them. And then in the winter, we help with uh, heating fuel as well. Um, if somebody has needs oil um, on a one-time basis. So, um, so yeah, those are some things that we provide in terms of homeless prevention. Um, and then we work with, have some other things that uh, are helpful if somebody is homeless, maybe they're in a shelter, or maybe they're not in a shelter, again, they're just, um, they're bouncing around, in, you know, in a friend's, friend's couch or something. Um, we also have some funds that can help folks pay their a security deposit and maybe towards their first month rent in a new apartment. And again, there's, there's, that's also, um, there's some application uh, criteria for that. Um, but that's, again, our goal is to help if people are homeless to get them into uh, permanent housing as soon as possible. And so having help with um, rent can certainly help that. Um, again, we, tr and we try to provide some case management. Again, we have actually a couple different funding sources for these programs. Um, but uh, if we can, we try to provide ongoing case management, help people with their budget, whatever they need to um, stay secure um, in their housing. Um, and again, this, there's two different programs. We have one actually requires pe that people are literally in a shelter on the street. The other program can provide funding even if somebody's just uh, sort of what we say is couch surfing. Um, just to jump back quickly to the homeless prevention piece, one of the things that um, we always emphasize if people are you know, getting behind or if they've actually gotten an initial notice from their landlord, it's really important that people like, start this process as soon as possible and contact us as soon as possible. We often get calls saying, I'm being evicted tomorrow. You know, this is an application process. We need documentation. Um, so there's often very little we can do if somebody calls us and saying they're being you know, evicted the next day. And, you know, the eviction process is specifically one that gives somebody time. I mean, from the, the, you know, the landlord has to give a certain amount of notice before that they can ask somebody to leave. So, if, if again, if you know of somebody who's struggling, um, you know, again, sometimes there's a stereotype that people are, you know, always trying to take advantage of this. You know, our big issue is oftentimes that people don't want to ask for help. And if they would ask for help sooner, again, we might be able to, to help them get over that hump. But if they wait to the last minute, then oftentimes the only option is the emergency shelter. And again, that's, that's not always, um, you know, that, that system is often strained. So um, just, just a word, if you happen to be working with somebody who, um, who is in a, in a rough situation, that's, you know, encouraging them to, to ask for help and not, not feel embarrassed by that. Again, we, it, things think often, you know, you can hear it oftentimes that, one, and there's even statistics about how, how many people are one paycheck away from you know, being in financial trouble. And it's not necessarily because they're mismanaging, it's just you know, depending on what their, their income level is, that's, that's the way their bill situation can be. So it doesn't need to be a, a situation where we're standing in judgment because somebody was mismanaging things. Um, so so um, in addition to the housing related services, we do have some other things that help ministries as well. Um, certainly if somebody uh, is in need of food, we don't, again, actually provide that at our site, but we can provide referrals. Um, again, if you know somebody who's needing to find a food pantry, the actual best resource is um, the Central PA Food Bank website, and you can put in a zip code, wherever zip code there is, and that will tell them what food pantry to go to, because oftentimes food assistance is based on where you live. You can't just go to any food pantry. So that's really the best resource. Um, but if people do come to our office, um, the Ecumenical Food Pantry, which is on 6th Street in Harrisburg, can always provide sort of emergency food, again, no matter where somebody lives. And then they'll refer them to whatever food pantry they should be going to on a longer term basis. Um, so we do, obviously, if somebody's coming looking for food, we try to direct them to that resource. Um, I mentioned before transportation assistance. If somebody's homeless and says, you know, hey, I have a place to stay. You know, we always call and verify that they truly do have a place to stay before we, you know, pay for a bus ticket or something for someone. Um, but we also help with transportation if somebody's just gotten employment and maybe needs a bus pass. Um, or, and then occasional, we'll help with, you know, 
fuel for a car too, if somebody's just in a pinch and can really show, um, you know, the reason for that and, and how we can help. Um, and then we also help with medication um, on a one-time basis. Again, that's something that not a lot of people know about, but again, thankfully these days mo most folks have insurance, but um, sometimes even insurance co-pays. Um, even if folks have insurance, we can help, help with the copay. Um, and again, that's not something we can do on an ongoing uh, uh, thing for folks, but we do, we do do that. And just to note that some of the medication and transportation in particular, some of those funds, um, we are a United Way agency, and so the United Way is, is, one of the, is the agency that helps provide some of that funding. Uh, so in addition to our churches, um, United Way, um, if, if you're um, at a place, uh, at a workplace that takes part in United Way, we encourage you to support them, and you can always choose CCU as your beneficiary under United Way also. Um, so yeah, that's that's a pretty pretty good summary of our help ministries program. Let's go ahead and take a break. Anybody have any questions um, about services that we offer there? I think this is really helpful information for us to pass along neighbors, <clears throat> um, people that you run into, and you're right. There there is no shame. Sometimes there are medical needs and people don't realize sometimes that they're one major health crisis away from bankruptcy um, and I did not know that you helped with medication needs and even on a one-time basis that's big um, I, I wish I would have known that <laughs> earlier because um, there's a there's an antibiotic that is hundreds and hundreds of dollars and it's the only thing used to treat a very bad infection, and I, I wish I would have done that. <laughs> so and again, it we can be helpful yeah. in, in reaching out to other people with this information. And we always do, again, before we're going to pay, we're going to check and see if there's any other resources that we can refer people to or that they've checked um, with insurance, or, you know, there's different manufacturers programs with, with drugs and those sorts of things. All right, so the other piece of homelessness, I mentioned that here at the help office, we don't actually, it's not the place where men come for shelter, but one of the things that um, many of the churches that were having been involved with us um, were involved in for a while is during the winter. Um, there was a need for those, for whatever reason, some men choose not to go to Bethesda Mission or have been had their time limited out there and they can't go back for a certain time. And so in the winter, there was a real need to get people in out of the cold. So uh, roughly, I don't know, somewhere around the year 2000, I believe, some of the churches in downtown Harrisburg started opening up their each, there were four churches, they each took a month during the winter to open up their fellowship hall. And they had volunteers uh, come in and sleep there uh, with the men. Um, after doing that a few years, they said, we really need something that's longer term, uh, that, that can help uh, folks, um, you know, get off the street. Again, the work that Bethesda done is great, but we need something more. And so they were able to work with the local coalition on homelessness, and just so you know, there is a, some, what's called the Capital Area Coalition on Homelessness that sort of tries to coordinate uh, homeless uh, services in the area. Um, and they worked with them to obtain some, some public money to build what's called Susquehanna Harbor Safe Haven. Uh, if you want to hit the next. Um, so Susquehanna Harbor Safe Haven uh, was built uh, specifically for men who fit a definition of chronically homeless, which means they've been homeless for at least a year and have a mental health diagnosis. And um, of course, a lot of folks on the street dealing with homelessness uh, do deal with mental health issues. So, um, you know, most, a lot of the men that are out there um, you know, fit those qualifications. And um, so this is, this building, it's not far from the, it's just off Cameron Street, not off, not far from the farm show. It's sort of back off the street though, so most people don't know that it's there. Um, and there's room for 25 men there, um, 15 sort of dormitory style beds when, when the guys first move in, and then 10 single rooms. So it's sort of a transitional type program. If they come in and they do well, um, if they get some income, start working, uh, then they can move up to a single room where they actually pay a little rent. And, um, and then obviously the goal is for them to get out into their, their own house or apartment. Um, but one of the things that's really unique about Safe Haven is there's not a time limit. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of 
for, for good reason, a lot of programs have a certain amount of time that people can stay just so they can help as many people as possible. But the understanding is, again, with, with guys who have been on the streets for a while and have a mental health, they may, they may take, it may take a while just for them to get stable in their mental health, to find employment, to really learn, you know, relearn some, again, those budgeting skills. So, um, so they don't have any, you know, sort of time pressure that they have to feel like they're under. And, um, and that's been a, it's been a really important program in our community in keeping, you know, getting some men off the street. And then the other thing that we do there um, is have the winter shelter that had been in the churches. Uh, they were sort of ready to have something, another place for that winter shelter. So we actually have a community room in this building, and we still do, and yeah, if you, I don't know if there's a picture of the community room, but yeah. So this talks about the long-term housing I just mentioned, and if you jump one more. Um, our winter overnight safe haven, in addition to those 25 beds, we have a community room where we can put down 23 mats on the floor, and we still um, open that up December through March. And, uh, and those, that is still staffed by volunteers. Uh, we always have an awake staff member in the building. Um, but uh, so we, a lot of times, churches will take a couple nights, uh, again, and provide two volunteers. Uh, we have a little bunk room that the volunteers sleep in, and mainly, the job of the volunteers is just to provide hospitality. When the guys come in, we open up at eight, um, and from eight they can come in from eight to ten, and ten's lights out. And then in the morning, uh, we wake them up and get some coffee before they head out the door. And so it's really, if you if you know of any, again, since it's a shelter for men, obviously we we want at least one of the volunteers to be a male, but we do have uh, you know men and women that, that come and volunteer as part of that shelter. Um, some other ways that churches can get involved with Safe Haven, uh, I mentioned we have the 10 private rooms. Um, as, as we have transition in those rooms, you know, sometimes the rooms need painted, maybe some new furniture. One of the things we like to be able to do is send furniture along with the guy when they move out. Um, and so we sort of, we have what we call an adopt a room program there. So if the church adopts a room, you know, we'll let you know if somebody's moving out, and we do sort of have to be able to, we, again, we want to try to turn that over fairly quickly because there's usually other people waiting to move up into the room, but if you have some volunteers in your church that sort of like to paint or decorate a room, again, make it feel home. Uh, the, in a building like this, sometimes, again, it can feel a little sterile, um, but to, to create a room welcoming for, for somebody, so that's, um, that's one way churches can get involved in there. The other thing, jumping back to help ministries, I'll mention one of the things that we started doing is um, we make what we call welcome home kits. And they are a kit that sort of basically uh, contains a bunch of household goods. Uh, you know, things you need when you're getting started. A broom, a, a dish pan, dish soap, you know, just those basic things that we all sort of take for granted. You know, again, oftentimes when people are evicted, they don't have money or time to put things in a storage so they may have had all their household supplies and it's just gone and coming out of a shelter again obviously they want to be putting money towards rent and, and whatever so these kits we can put together a kit for easily less a little less than a hundred dollars hundred dollars at the most and so that's another thing that a church group can get together and do uh, to help out and then we just keep those for them when we're helping people move in to places after they've been in shelter um, so yeah, and then af, uh, I think the next slide is a prison ministry. So, yeah, so while we're, we're focusing on the housing, I mentioned uh, Safe Haven and Help Ministries, our main program. Uh, Christian Churches United has also always been involved in prison work. And I know um, actually Pastor Keith here uh, has been involved in some of that in the past. And one of the things we do is what we call a monthly community connections breakfast. I think that may have actually been hosted here at the church again a number of years ago. Um, and that's a different church hosts that each month and basically provides a breakfast on a Saturday morning. And we provide transportation for men and women from some of the local halfway houses, um, the Dauphin County Work Release Center, and then there's some state halfway houses. And um, they just come out for a breakfast and we have a, a either the church provides a speaker or we provide a speaker to just provide some encouragement. And it's just a way for men and women, again, that are in transition, they're going to be coming back into the community um, to have, find a place where, to realize that there's places that will welcome and, um, you know, want, want to support them as, as they come back into the community. Um, so, 
We also do, actually at our uh, facility on 19th Street, we do a worship service every Sunday afternoon, specifically for men and women from the Dauphin County Work Relief Center. And again, different churches come in and do the, those services as well. So I just wanted to you know, make you aware of, of the, that piece. Um, and just in general, again, Christian Churches United exists to help churches work together, believing that we can do more together than, than any one church can do on its own. Um, and so we're always just looking for opportunities uh, to, yeah, to encourage uh, people to, to work together. And that's primarily done through these programs that I mentioned. Um, but and we're you know we're always looking happy to have volunteers that can potentially help out uh, whether that's just some things around our building. Um, we're in an old church building that uh, we just had a group yesterday from United Way Day of Caring doing some work around the building. There's always things to be done in the building, and then also just providing encouragement and support to the, to the folks that we're working with. So. Any any other question? Any questions? All right. Well, I do have I have um, some, I do have a table downstairs. I'm going to have to be stepping out here in just a few minutes. So I brought um, a couple of the health ministries and safe haven uh, and the information about the welcome home kits. Um, if anybody, uh, I'll just I can have this up here or send it around if you want to grab something. And uh, yeah, so appreciate the, you having us out today. And wish you the best as you continue to connect with your local community. Thank you.